It's on Tuesday. Ready what? Ready when you are. We're ready? Yep. All right. Now that we're, uh, so we're up, and, up and running? We're running. All right. I'd like to thank everybody again uh, for coming out today. It's uh, really hard to believe that it's November the 1st. Basketball is less than five days away. And uh, another season's here. Uh, it's just, it, it's amazing how fast it, it, it's gone by. Uh, going on year 12, uh, you know, the growth of our, our program, the growth of our media day. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's outstanding. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just want to thank our players because at the end of the day, if it wasn't for them, you all aren't going to be here. You know, they come out, they compete, they play. They're the ones that get the results. And I just appreciate you all coming today uh, to learn more about our program, our players. And, uh, you know, I hope you'll be as excited about this upcoming season as we are. So any questions, please. Um, Coach, the departure from Asia Hines Allen left the hole in the starting lineup. Um, do you have any set replacement for her in the starting five? No. You know what? We are still right uh, right now at a stage we've got five days before our first game, and I, and I can honestly tell you I'm not exactly sure who I'm going to go with. Uh, we have had some great practices. We have, you know, I'd say se seven or eight that could easily start for a lot of programs. And right now I think it's going to end up turning into a situation of who we're playing, what our matchups are going to look like, uh, determining on who I might start. You know, if we play a team that's got some bigs, then we might have, have to go uh, two bigs. If we've got a team that's playing four guards, we can start four guards. Because um, I've got a group of young women that want, that, that, that want to win. Uh, it's not necessarily all about, do I get a start? It's about, are they going to get a chance to contribute when it matters? And I really feel confident that all of them are. Coach, you were starting at the season going from shore to shore, basically, on the road before you come home. Uh, talk about the challenges of being traveling all that much to start. Now, you know, with them pushing the start, bake, the start date back a few days, you know, you, it used to be the ninth, and now we're allowed to go on the sixth. So it's actually given us a little bit of opportunity uh, to, to make travel easier. So we had originally been planned to play uh, in a Christmas event before Christmas down in Vegas, and the event en en ended up being canceled back in the end of April, 1st of May, which for scheduling is a, a, a disaster. So then I've got to start scrambling. Uh, Western needed a game. Chattanooga needed a game. Boise needed a game. Uh, but unfortunately, they all needed home games. Uh, and it just worked out that now starting on the 6th, we're going to open up at Western, head down there to Chatt uh, Chattanooga on the 9th. Then we've got about a week off because we play Friday, then we don't play till the following Monday at Boise. And then we were able to get into a Thanksgiving tournament in Vegas. So we'll go from Boise straight down to Vegas. So, I mean, it's, it's one of those, sure, we're on the road for five straight games. First three are true, ro true road games, then we'll have two – uh, games on on neutral sites, and then we're we're back home. So it's let's get it out of the way. We'll we'll find out a lot about our team, and which I think is a good thing. I, I've always said it. You know, pe people question me like, why do you want to go to Western Kentucky and play? You know, they're a really good program. They're 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 very well coached. They've got good players. There's a chance you're going to lose. Chattanooga's the same the same way. Boise is a NCAA tour tournament team from last year, you know. And, and my and my philosophy is, hey, you know, they are good 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 ball clubs. I'd rather find out what my team can do now on the road than wait until I'm at Duke or wait until I'm at North Carolina, and all and all of a sudden I'm learning. Well, we don't handle adversity very well on the road. I'd rather find it out now so then we can fix it if it's a problem or show them the success that, uh, that we've had. Have you had much chance to see who will step into kind of that stabilizing role that Aisha had or any one person will? 
it's it's not going to be one. You know, we've got Ky Kylie Shook and, and and Bianca are going to have to step their game up to be more consistent for us, which they have the capabilities of doing that. Sam Furian's going to go from being, you know, one of those players that, that didn't get all the uh, attention in the post de defensively because of what Maisha was going what was able to do, to where now she'll be being defended by the other team's best post player. So there's going to be it's going to be a lot more challenges for her, but I, I think she's prepared for that. She understands that her role is going to change. Um, Yasin Diop and Jasmine Jones will both play some four for me. You know, when we go small and try and be more a athletic and try to get the pace of the game at a higher pace. Um, but there's not one that's really stood out yet that's like, that's going to be my spot. I, it's the same as I've always said when we, Angel graduated, Shoney graduated, people were like, how, how, how are you going to replace her? Well, you're not. You're not going to, nobody's going to come in and do what Maisha did. It's a matter of trying to figure out what two or three players can, can get me three or four rebounds each a game to make up for her nine. Can Dana get me five more points a game? Can AC get two or three? Can Jazz get two or three? <laughs> Uh, and then Sam hopefully can get five, five or six. And then before you know it, we've made up for that 14 a night that we've lost. Um, you know, I think the biggest challenge is going to be just her presence. You know, when, Ma when Ma Maisha stepped on the floor, P P people knew she was on the floor. Uh, she carried herself in a, in, in a confident way, not an arrogant way, but a confident way, which I think is so important. Uh, but when that... When the lights came on and it was game time, the kid, she, she, she showed up and played. And that's the challenge that we're, we're going to have in front of us to who, who can give the presence on the floor. Yeah, seen the, uh, one of um, Pitt's best players. Can you just talk about what you've seen from her at practice so far? Well, she's really now just starting to get back into things. She missed the entire month of S September because she was with the Senegalese national team playing over in the World Cup. So she wasn't with us the entire month of September. She left mid-August. Mid so she really started back up here the first week of October. So it, it's taken her a little bit of time to get comfortable, uh, to, to figure out her new role and in, in what we're asking her to do. But now I'm, start, I'm starting to see it. You know, she's, she's got the ability to score. She can score inside, outside. Uh, I'm her, challenging her at the, de the defensive end to be more of a presence for us. She, she's got to re, rebound the ball, but she can put the ball in the basket. And at the end of the day, I, I haven't won too many games 23-21. So, you know, I'll figure out the other end. You know, I'll figure out a way to guard somebody, but we've got to be able to score. Well, it, it, it's nice to be able to go against somebody different. Uh, really enjoyed our, our last scrimmage that, 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 that we had because we shared some film. And they were able to put a scouting report together. We were able to put a scouting report together, which then really we're able to sit, 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 sit down and show our players, hey, through one film, that staff was able to see you turn over your left shoulder every single time. And instead of hearing it from me in practice like a broken – record, they're actually able to see another coach do a scat report and say, hey, she turns over her, her left shoulder. So now there's more validity to what's being said. So that, so that was a, a benefit to us. And then we just got to move, move, move the ball quicker on offense. Offensively, those we 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 get a little stagnant at times. Now we're we're you know we were able to put up you know close to maybe a, a eighty five a game in our our two exhibition games. You, you don't keep score throughout; it's every quarter you clear it off and all that good stuff. Uh, but I like the way we were able to score. And again, def defensively, we'll work on that as it goes. No, nobody here wants to come out and see a forty nine forty six game. <laughs> Y'all will stop coming. One of those big reasons it hasn't been on 49-46, um, Asia Durr entering her final season. Can you just talk about what she's meant to this program so far? Well, I, she's special. You know, I mean, the, the, she, she can put the ball, ball in the basket. She makes big shots. She, uh, she's fun to watch. 
And I think that's why a lot of our fans c- 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 come out to watch us. You know, we've had Angel, we've had Shoney, and now it's a- a- Asia Durr, and I think they'll really be impressed with what D- Dana Evans is a- able to do th- this year. She's Im- I- improved her game. Our two freshmen. I mean, they're go- you guys are going to love love these two freshmen that are going are are going to play this year. They run around now. They run around with their heads chopped off at times, but you'll never question their energy, their effort. And when you're when I've got to deal with you playing too hard, you know that that's easy to fix. It's when you get players in here that that you know they they think they're really good, so they don't sprint every time up and down the floor. Which we've been fortunate the past few years. We we don't have those, uh, but these two. Freshman Mikasa and Sagan, you're you're going to really enjoy watching. Where do you, they, you mentioned how much the program has grown over the last ten or thirteen years. What what are the next few steps? What what growth is is there that you're looking for now? Well, I mean, it's it's the win to win that last game. I mean, you know, our ultimate goal is to win a national ch- championship here. I mean, there there's no question about it. Uh, we've got to keep doing it on the recruiting end. Uh, because at the end of the day, good players help win. I mean, it's, it, it's not a secret. Uh, but you're, you're not always going to just base your entire year. Like, I'm not going to base la- la- last year by the fact we lost in overtime in the semis that it was a bad year. No, it was a remarkable year. Uh, but our ultimate goal is to win that last ball game. And, you know, I talked with Steph about it the other day, Steph Norman, you know, we've been together all 12 years, Adrian Johnson also. And to think that we're sitting here now saying that, you know, the last bid for us is to try and finish it and win national championships is quite amazing. You know, we, when we get the job, Tom's goal for us was to get to a Sweet 16. I was like, God, if you can just have, sustain a program and get us to the Sweet 16 and maybe an Elite Eight, that would be great. Well, now, you know, we get beat in the Sweet, the, the, the sweet 16. A ter- it, it's a terrible year by people. You know, I mean, so it's a great thing that expectations have completely changed. And that's what our players like. Our players love to have those expectations. Uh, but it's one game at a time. We know that. It's one practice at a time. I mean, we're trying to get better every single day. We're trying to win the day, as they say. Uh, we've won some and we've lost some. So now it's a matter of just continuing to keep the c- consistency there. If you talk about the freshmen, where where do they kind of fit in the mix or where have they been fitting in the mix right now? They are, they are right in the mix. Uh, you know, I expect them both. When we go down here to Western Kentucky on Tuesday, I expect them both to play in the first half. It won't surprise me if they're both out there in the first quarter. We're going to try to keep the tempo going. Uh, you know, but you've got, you've got to be able to perform. I mean, you know, that's – pretty much what they they all know I mean they're going to get a chance to play now what you do with that is completely up up to you and that's one of the things that I'm really trying to talk to all the players about is you're going to dictate what our lineups going going to be it's my job to figure out what's what's the best bunch to start with and then what's our best substitution pattern what's going to mesh the best because the hard thing about it is it's what I've learned the past five opportunities I've had to coach out at USA Basketball is it's not always the 12 best players that make, that make a team. It's the 12 best players that are able to form the best team. So, you know, we've had situations here in the past. Tia Gibbs did not start a game for us, and she was by far could have started without a problem for us. But she was willing to come off the bench because she knew when she came in the game she was a spark. And that's what you've got to figure out. You, you, you've got to find a group of players that at the end of the day, if I don't get to go out there and do my handshake, you know, and all that stuff, it's okay. I challenge them all. Would you rather start or be in the game with three minutes to go in a tie game? Because I can start you, then sub you with, with 9.56 after four seconds. I'll throw the ball up and sub you out. You can say you started. But at the end of the day, you want to make an impact, and that's kind of what I'm challenging all of our players with, because we very well could have different starting lineups depending on who we're playing. How difficult is that for a high school all-star to think that, that starting may not matter as much or and scoring may not matter as much? How do you do that? Well, I mean, you've, you've, you've got to be mature. You've got to realize. I mean, the, the days of 
<laughs> back 15, 16 years ago, five, I mean, 10, where you came into a program and it was like, man, if I just get to play as a freshman, that, that, that's going to be awesome. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll have to work my way into a lineup, work my way into a rotation. You know, now a lot of them are thinking, hey, th this is my turn as soon as I'm, I'm a freshman. And some of them are talented enough. I mean, you know, it depends how good you are. But at the same time, I always laugh because everybody tells me in all this recruiting, I want to play with other great players, but I want to start. <laughs> well, it's, it, I mean, wow, it's, it's really unique. Do you think there's only great players at every other spot, but at your spot they're not good? So that, that's a challenge. It's like there are unique situations where you have players that come in that are special. You know, your Asia Dirge, your Shoney Schimmels, you know, and those are the ones that come in here as a freshman and might beat some beat somebody out because we've had plenty of freshmen start through throughout my, tw my my twelve years here, and then I've had some that like an Erica Carter, who played little minutes her, her freshman year and has grown into a, a young woman who was our starting point guard on a Final Four team because it was a process. And that's what I try to teach all these players. Everybody's journey is not the same. You know, I've had players that have come in here and started as freshmen and then peaked and never got any better. And then they got passed up. Then I've had players that come in here and they fight, they fight, they fight. And before you know it, they're the ones that are making your impact for you. <coughs> Shantae Dyers of the world. You know, Asia, Asia, Asia Taylors. I mean, kids that came in here and just realized, hey, i got to work to get what I want. And then you do have your Shonies who were special. I mean, the kid was special. You know, I tell everybody, though, her first game her freshman year was Tennessee here, and she set a record for most turnovers by a, a, a freshman in the, the first game. She had eight. She was one for eight from the three-point line, was like three of 15 from the field. But she learned, and that's the one thing that I, that I take pride in is, like, I wasn't going to take her out because I knew for her to be as good as she could, she had to learn from playing. She had to learn from like, okay, this isn't high school anymore. I can't make that one-handed length of the court pass. And, you know, that same year we go up to Xavier and play at Xavier in the second round of the tournament, and Xavier's a two seed, and the kid drops 33 and goes 10, 10, 10 for 16 from the field. And I think part of that is because you come in and you learn, hey, I've, I, I, I've got to grow. And that's one of the challenges when they, when they come in at freshman is can you self -evaluate? E evaluate where where you are. You recruit all over the country, out of the country, even. So, I mean, how does it wind up that you know this year your pre your freshmen are, are all from in state? Have your recruiting tactics changed over the years in terms of looking at kids in Kentucky? No, we we always start start here first. We always start in state first, and we're just fortunate that, that we had three in state that you know wanted to be a part uh, a part of this. Uh, their talent level was high enough to be a part of it. And it's, it, it's been great. I mean, it's, it's nice to, to be able to have some in-state players, of course. I mean, that, that's our first goal is to look in-state. And then we try to go surrounding, and then we move our way out. So it, ju it just worked out. It was never a plan of, like, we've got to just recruit in-state players. Well, you know, the one thing I, she did this summer that I was very impressed with was she took some time off, which I, I know that might sound a little odd, but she's always in the gym. She's always, she needed to give her body a rest. She needed to get stronger. She worked on her strength. She worked on her stamina. Um, so I thought that was a big step for her. And now what I'm challenging her with the, this upcoming season is I, I want her on the attack more. I want I want her to be making more plays, not scoring more points per se. I want her making more plays. I want her putting pressure on a defense. I want her to see her pass out of double teams. I want to see her be the one that's really attacking and possibly opening up for uh, for others. Because I I mean I'm I'm expecting P people to come out and try to you know d double her at time, run some junk d defenses at her. But as soon as she learns to be more aggressive. An attack, then you've got a problem doing that when she's beating you other ways besides scoring. So she was 
with the Oregon girl, the most vote getters on the AP team they announced today. Is she the best player in the country? I think she's right there. Uh, I, I, you know, all you can look at is off of what they've done in the past, and I think she she's proven that she can play can play big on a big stage. Uh, she was pretty consistent throughout the year, all, all last season, which is another thing that I look at. Because um, you know, I, I like to see the players when when you play somebody you're supposed to beat. I expect you to play the same with the same intensity as you are when you're playing a top five team. Those are the ones that stand out to me. Don't don't give me that. Well, I knew we were going to win, so I just didn't play hard. You know, the day which I can't can't figure out. You know, go back to old days. Like when when you're playing, you knew you, you knew you were going to beat somebody. It was like I got to get my twenty before coach gets me out of the game. You know, now it's like ah, well, it's okay. No, heck no. you you got to go and play. And that's the one thing I think Asia is, is doing. Is she, it doesn't matter who we're playing. It's another opportunity to play, and she's trying to make the most of it. Is there a, has she come farther than almost anybody? I mean, when she started where she was till now, I mean, she's come a long, long way. There's no question about it. I, I think she's really – you know, her freshman year, the first few weeks of practice, I honestly thought she had a chance to – to break into our starting lineup as a freshman. Um, and, and then she kind of went on a dip, and I think part, part of that was j- just because of her strength and, and stamina. But she's really – she's put the time in the gym. She's worked on her shot. You know, she, she didn't make one three, I, I don't think, her entire freshman year. And now she ended up shooting close to 40%, if not 40, from the three-point line this past season. She's, she's someone you have to guard. Uh, I say it all the time. I said it all all last year. She is your perfect forty and over men's league player. <laughs> I mean, it, where you you know you, you can't you're 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 not just going to blow by somebody. You got to be able to make a pass. You got to be able to read a defense. You got to be able to knock down an open shot. Nobody's trying to dunk because you're afraid you're going to tear an ACL. You know, it's that's what she does. When you watch her, there's nothing that you're going to be like, wow, look look at that move. But at the end of the day, when you look at her stat sheet, you're always impressed because it's like, golly, she had 12 points. She had four assists, one turnover. She She's able to, to do those things. How much time did you guys spend this summer, the first few weeks of practice, looking back at film from last season, whether it was you know watching you know disappointing games that you wanted to learn from or watching kind of the, the best games to see what you can carry over to this season? We did most of that back in the spring in the spring. After the season was over as a staff, we went back through and said, okay, this is what we like. This is what we uh, uh, we didn't like. You know, these these, these are the games that we, we performed well in. Uh, and then once that was finished, then we formulated what we're going to try to do with this ball club. Now, we're, we aren't going to change a whole bunch, but we do know that, okay, we don't have Maisha that was pretty dominant in, in the post, so we might have to be more guard oriented. Uh, at times, Kylie is more of a perimeter player when you look <laughs> at her over her past two, her for her first two years. So we have been working on trying to get her to score score more in the low the low block, which we're which we're going to need. Uh, so it was more so just trying to figure out back in the spring, okay, what could we have done differently? What would we like to see us change, and where are we planning to go? What do you see from Evans this year? She really came on at the end of last year. Yeah, she's she's worked on her game. Uh, her her three point shot is much better. It's much more consistent. Uh, that's one thing that was a you know it, it was a challenge for her. when you go from taking twenty five to thirty shots a game in high school to now you're going to get maybe six to ten in a college game. You've got to be efficient. You can't take bad uh, bad shots, and that's just not for that. that that's for all players because that's their biggest challenge. You know, you go 0, 0 for 8 in high school where you you know you're getting 15 more shots. You know, now all of a sudden I go 7 for 8. Well, I'm right back. You know, I'm, I'm having a good game. Well, you're 0 for 8 in college, and you're taking bad shots. The odds of you getting 8, eight more shots aren't very good. So you've got to make sure you're taking the opportunity to take good, take good shots. I, I tell them all the time, if you shoot 50% or better from, from the field, you can shoot it from wherever you want, whenever you want. I don't care. I don't care if you get it and you cross half court and shoot it. 
you'll, you'll, you will stay in the game. Because the odds of you shooting 50% if you do that are slim to none. So I tell them, you shoot 50% or better, I don't care at what point in time in the shot clock it is, you can shoot the ball. Or from where. And they're all realizing and, and figuring out that, man, okay, th this works. So now they're not taking bad shots because they all want the green light. So it's worked out for us. This might be the most similar that your team has looked the year after a Final Four to the year before in terms of just the same kids on your roster. Do you think that helps in getting back there? That well, 13-14, we returned all five. That's the one, you know, and, and we added a few. So that so that 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 year is comparable to this, and it, it, it's is it going to guarantee you anything? No, you know that that's when you get down to when you're in the elite eight, final four, you're in the semis and in, in championship game. Everybody's so good, and this is just my honest opinion that you're going. It, it's not always the best team that wins. It's whoever plays the best that night. Um, and you're going to need a break here or there. You know, a ball goes off somebody's foot and they give it back to you. You know, something in that terms will dictate a game at times because everybody's so good. Uh, but we are excited. We are, we're excited about what we have returning, what our incoming freshman and Yassine is going to be able to add because we do have a really good nucleus of our team back. And they were all a big part of it. It's not like you've got – four players back that really didn't do anything. You know, they all had a significant impact to our ball club. Well, easy might not be the right word, but when you have your staff, each year you have the same staff, does it make it a little? The continuity's great. Yeah, because we all know what, what to do. Like, I can sit here, and if, if we if we go over and we're starting practice, I don't have to worry about it. My staff knows exactly what to do. Um, you know, and I'm obviously not going to be coaching that first game of the NCAA tournament, so it, it'd be great to have Steph for, you know, knowing what she's doing. Uh, and Sam Purcell, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's nice. It was getting past this year's tournament hard. Most other years you went to the Final Four in terms of getting teams to be one. Oh, yeah. I, no, it, it, it's, it sucks. I mean, there's no other word for it. I mean, there's actually a few more words for it, but... I, I, I don't want to say those. I told my wife I'm going to try to get better. Uh, no, it's 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 never going to. It, it it always stings. It always you sit there and and, and you go back and replay everything. Uh, yeah, it, it it's tough. It's a tough pill to swallow. It's one that, you know, it shouldn't come down to that last play. It, it's you you can go back and this, this is why I tell everybody. Everybody talks about the last minute and a half, the last two two minutes of a game, and it's like, I can go back to the first quarter and show you when we missed a layup or when we didn't switch on a screen and we gave up a simple layup, that if you do that back then, it, you're not even worried about this last two plays of the game. But, yeah, it, it stings. It's tough. I mean, you know, our, our kids, we felt good going into the, the Final Four. We felt like we had a chance to win it. Uh, as all four teams did. I mean, obviously, it's a, it's without a doubt. I don't think any, a, anybody can argue the best Final Four in women's basketball that there's ever been three games. I mean, yeah, you could go back and play that again, and any, any four of us could have won. Where in 09 and 13, you could play it 100, 100 times, and UConn was going to win. I mean, it, you know, this was a year where all four teams – and anybody had, had had a chance to win it. Has it been good for the game that UConn hasn't won the last two? Well, no. I mean, it's not bad for the game. I mean, even if they have won, because I, I think it, I'm not a believer that like everybody talks about it's bad for the game. It's bad for the game. So it was, is Alabama not going to play anymore this year in football? Because they must be awful for, awful for the game. Because every game I watch, it's like 56 to three, but everybody seems to keep watching it. And they all say, what an unbelievable coach Nick Saban is. He's phenomenal. He's the best. Well, Gino's done the same thing. So I, I don't – to me, stop saying it's women's basketball because it's college football too, and I think it's men, right? It's a men's sport, I think. So why isn't it bad? Because it's a men's sport? 
But it's bad on our side because it's women's basketball. Who wants to watch that? Who wants to watch Alabama? I do. I think it's impressive. I, I think it's amazing. I had the same feeling when I was watching UConn play. I mean, because I think it's impressive every night they come out and do it. And, and, and do what they've done. Now recruiting starting to change. You know, like more players are going to different schools. And it's, you know, now it's like, hey, they've got some good players too. I've got some good players. And it's not like he's always gotten the best player every single year. He, he, he does a great job with his players. So, you know, is it good for the game? I think it's good for some people because some people like to see something different. But, you know, it wouldn't have... It's not like it would have crushed me if it's like, oh, they won again. Well, no, they have to show up and play too. Now, I'm sure I'll get yelled at for that for some reason. <laughs> I'll be, uh, who, who knows what I just said wrong? But you mentioned that the, you're, you're <laughs> I don't even know anymore half the time. Enjoy the club. <laughs> you mentioned that your goal was a national championship. How many, how many teams in women's basketball can that be a realistic goal for to start this season, you think? I mean, I, 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 I can easily think that there's probably 10, 10 to 12 right now when, when I look at rosters. I mean, when you look at teams. And the thing about it is you go back to 2009, 2013, we, 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 we weren't in that 10 to 12. N nobody thought we had a shot. So it, it's, I, I say this all the time. It's why... College basketball, and, and I could be wrong because I, I, I don't know the ratings. Like men's college basketball, you look at this time of year when it gets to March, it's one of the most viewed sporting events in the world. Is it not the Final Four? I mean, just March Madness. It's because a anything can happen. You look at the upsets you get. It's not a best of five. It's not a best of seven. You know, you go best of five, best of seven, and all of a sudden, you know, somebody might upset up, – upset somebody one time, but normally your best team is going to win. There, there, there's no doubt, doubt about it. I've got, even in women's college volleyball, you know, what, in my opinion, what's changed their game was when they went to, to 25. When it used to be you could only score on your point, on your serve, the, the best team won just about every single time because you had to actually – you could only score on your on your serve, so it, it, it you had to earn it. Where now it's rally scoring, and all of a sudden if I get hot and all of a sudden I get up 22-20, there's a chance I'm winning. So I think it's changed their their game also. That it's not always just the best teams going to win. There's more opportunity for upsets. That was deep, wasn't it? See. I pay attention to uh, uh, other sports. So we'll do a team photo, and then the team will be available on the court. And then you'll have to stay for the first 30 minutes of practice. Stay as long as you want. I don't know who the hell he thinks stay. he is. <laughs> God dang. Man, you're a bully. You are a bully. God darn. Don't run the media out, though. Golly. You're running the wrong people out. <laughs>